This week we celebrate Thanksgiving. All the busyness of the holiday, the cranberries, the turkey, and the Black Friday sales can cloud out the truth of where Thanksgiving came from and why we take the time to be thankful. So join me in learning a brief history of Thanksgiving. The Pilgrims. The roots of our Thanksgiving begin in England in the 1600s. At that time, there was a growing dissatisfaction with the Church of England. Some people concluded there was no longer hope for the Church of England, and they separated from the state church. They were known as the Separatists. Others disagreed with the state church, but they wanted to stay a part of the state church. They were known as the Puritans because they wanted to purify the Church of England. The Church of England felt threatened by both of these groups. They fined, arrested, imprisoned, and even executed Puritans and Separatists. As a result, many of the Puritans and Separatists left England and moved to Holland. But after a decade on Dutch soil, many of them were exploring the possibility of sailing across the sea to the New World. They knew sailing across the ocean was an enormous risk. In spite of the risks, a small group of them sailed for America, leaving their loved ones behind. The Voyage to America. On August 5, 1620, a ship named the Speedwell and another named the Mayflower began the voyage. The Speedwell began to leak and both ships returned to port. And eventually the Speedwell was determined to be unseaworthy and beyond repair. Finally, it was just the Mayflower that left England for America on September 6, 1620 with 102 passengers on board. Sailing to America that late in the year was treacherous. The Mayflower was battered by storms with waves over 50 feet high during the crossing. After 65 days at sea, the pilgrims finally caught a glimpse of land. They were looking at the northern tip of Cape Cod and on November 11, 1620, the pilgrims got on their knees and gave thanks to God for delivering them across the ocean. But it wasn't until December 11th that the pilgrims decided on a permanent location for their settlement. The first winter. The plans were to build a meeting house and 19 family dwellings that would be 18 by 14 feet in size. Unfortunately, by January the meeting house was built, but only a small portion of the family dwellings were built. Then the roof on the meeting house caught fire the pilgrims were forced to live in what was left of the meeting house and on the Mayflower that first winter. And it was at this time when an illness that they called the general sickness ravaged the colonists. On a given day, only six or seven of the 100 colonists were strong enough to tend to the sick. The pilgrims were dying at two or three a day at that time. But by March, the weather began to warm and help arrived. On March 16th, 1621, they were greeted by an Indian who spoke perfect English. His name was Samoset. He was chief of the Algonquins. Now at one time, he was captured by English fishermen. That is when he learned English, and he returned later to his tribe to find every single one of them dead from a mysterious illness. Samoset and another of the five Indians that were with him called Squanto were key to the pilgrim survival that spring. They translated for the pilgrims and helped them trade with other Indian tribes. The Indians also taught the pilgrims how to catch eels and fish in the river, to plant pumpkins and tap maple trees for syrup. Those were all important for their survival. Without those Indians, the pilgrims would not have made it through. The first Thanksgiving. By October 1621, exactly 400 years ago, the corn planted by the pilgrims was ready for harvest. The pilgrims' hearts were full of gratitude for health, a good harvest, and the peace they enjoyed with the Indians. William Bradford, who was only 30 years of age, was the newly elected leader of the colony. He decided the pilgrims should hold the first Thanksgiving, and they invited the Indians as their special guests. They served turkey, eels, geese, lobster, partridge, and shellfish. 
Vegetables included, included cucumbers, onions, carrots, cherries, and plums. But before they ate the meal, they had a prayer of thanksgiving. They had done remarkably well. They'd only lost 50% of them that year to death. That was better than other settlements, like Jamestown, who had lost 90% of their members in the first year. The first Thanksgiving lasted three days. It included foot races, wrestling matches, and shooting contests with both bows and arrows, as well as guns. The Pilgrims and the Indians celebrated together. In fact, the first Thanksgiving was so successful, the Pilgrims and Indians decided to have another one the following year. The Bible tells us to give thanks in all circumstances in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And in the upcoming years, that is what the pilgrims did. While they would face many harsh summers and bitter cold winters where their loved ones died, God had been good. They would give thanks. The Thanksgiving holiday. Today, exactly 400 years after the first Thanksgiving, we are the ones who benefit from their sacrifice. We enjoy a free country and freedom of religion, and that is what they were seeking for themselves and their children. And just as they took a day to stop and thank God for being good to them in spite of their hardship, we should also stop and take a day to thank God for being good to us in spite of our hardship. William Bradford, who called the first Thanksgiving said, quote, we must not forget what our fathers obtained with so much hardship. In other words, each Thanksgiving, it's important for us to remember the sacrifices made by those who went before us to give us a free land and make us a free people. And it's also right for us to stop and thank God for all of his good gifts to us as individuals and as a nation in spite of our hardships. So this year, I wanna remind you to be filled with thanks as we have a happy Thanksgiving. Take care.